Welcome to the first screencast on using JMeter, brought to you by the folks at BlazeMeter. Now, suppose after watching the screencast, we want to see what the site performance will be when five users go right to the website. So they'll go to blazemeter.com, and they'll probably scroll down, take a quick look around, and see what BlazeMeter has to offer. And then they might want to obviously click the pricing to see what the prices are, and scroll down and see. Now, let's go ahead and create that same load using JMeter. So what we'll cover is how to install JMeter and create a test plan using some of the basic elements of JMeter, thread groups, some configuration elements, a timer, some samplers, and listeners. If you haven't done so already, go to the JMeter website and go to download releases and scroll down and find the binaries to download to your computer. Once the download is complete, go ahead and move that file to a location you want to have JMeter installed. In this case, I'm going to go ahead to my user local directory and copy that file over. Once the file is completed, go ahead and extract it. Let me clear the screen. Navigate into that folder and go to the bin. In that folder, you're going to see a series of scripts that will run JMeter in, a couple, in various different modes. Uh, over the course of the videos, we'll go ahead and cover some of these, but for now, I just want to start JMeter up and get started on writing a simple script to test out the BlazeMeter website. So, based on OS, go ahead and write the, uh, run the appropriate JMeter script. sh for my Mac, .bat for Windows machines. Now that JMeter has launched, you're going to see the test plan. The test plan is where the overall settings of a test are specified. We can give our test a name. Performance test. Let's add a comment. Um, first, JMeter script. Then we have other options such as defining a user-defined variable. So let's go ahead and create one called site. And we're going to use blazemeter.com. And there are other options such as run thread groups consecutively. Um, if it's not checked, they'll run our thread groups in parallel. Thread groups determines the number of users JMeter will simulate when executing a test plan. So let's click on my test plan. Let's see, let's change that here. Right click on blazemeter performance test. Select Add Threads Thread Group. Here, let's give it a name. And we'll say Blaze Meter Visitors. And I'm going to set this to stop the thread if an error occurs. And for right now, I'm going to set the number of users to 1. Since we want our users to simulate what our real user would use when it goes against the website, there are two additional elements we want to add. So right click on thread group, and we're going to hit a config element, and we're going to select the cache manager. The cache manager will basically control the user's cache within the scope of the test, and then we'll add another one called the cookie manager. And the cookie manager will also hand manage cookies during execution, and if we really want to do, we could can define our own cookies as well. Now let's go ahead and add a sampler. The sampler performs the actual work in JMeter. So let's go to BlazeMeter Visitors and right click, select Add, and we want Sampler. Because we want to visit the BlazeMeter website, we're going to add an HTTP request sampler. There you go. Let's go rename this to BlazeMeter Homepage. And we want to set the server name. Because we're going to BlazeMeter.com, we're going to go ahead and place it here. However, if you remember back here in our test plan, we had created a variable called site, and it was set to blazemeter.com. So let's go back to our sampler and rename that. And we're going to use the site variable. Okay. Now we're going to add what is called a listener. The listener allows us to view the results of a sampler. So let's right click on the blazemeter homepage sampler and add a listener. And for now, let's select view results in a tree. Great. 
So let's save this and let's call this Hello Blaze Meter JMX and we'll run it. And success. We can see the request to the Blaze Meter homepage. Request is made, blazemeter.com, and we'll get a response. And here's the text from the response. Down here, we can actually change how we view the response. So let's go take a look at the HTML, and that's the HTML we received. If we wanted to, we can also download the resources that came along, and we can get, the, for example, the images. Great. So let's have the next sampler, which was the pricing page. So to make this fast, I'm going to go ahead and copy this sampler and select the thread group Blaze Meter Visitors and do a paste. And here it is again, but this time I wanted to go to the pricing page. So let's rename this to pricing page, and we're going to add slash pricing. All right, let's clear the results again, and we'll run it. Then it went to the home page, and it went to the pricing page. Great. Again, the request, blazemeter.com slash pricing. There's the response, the text. And we're going to change to HTML, and we'll see the pricing. You probably noticed by now that users who will visit the website do not instantly click on the home page and select pricing. So Gmeter has a way of handling that. What we're going to do is we're going to add a constant timer. So select the thread group Blaze Meter Visitors, and right-click and go to Timers, Add Timer, and we're going to add a constant timer. We want the delay for about five seconds. Now notice my constant timer is listed here at the bottom. This would actually have no effect to go from the Blaze Meter homepage to the pricing page. So I want to move this up. I can click on this and drag it up. And we want to set it just before the pricing page. So I want to select pricing page and then have insert before. So now when the test runs, it's going to go to the home page. Then it's going to wait for five seconds, and then it's going to go to the pricing page. Okay, let's go clear my results here for a second, and let's take a look, and run the test. All right. So notice I went to the home page. It's waiting about five seconds, and there it is on the pricing page. Great. Now let's go ahead and increase the number of users. Go back to my Blaze Meter visitors and select the number of threads. I'm going to put it to five. And I'm going to increase the ramp up time because in reality, I don't expect all my five users to be within one second of each other. And let's go ahead and run the test again. Hit the screen, hit run. And you'll notice now that threads is five and you can see them slowly ramp up. And one, two, three, four, five. All right, they've all hit the home page. Waits about five seconds and they've hit the pricing page. Great, so now I have five users visiting the Blaze Meter website. Now I'm going to make some adjustments to my script. Let me maximize the screen here. At the bottom of this sampler, there's an option called Retrieve All Embedded Resources from HTML Files. Go ahead and do that here, and I want to do that as well here. Now I'm going to run my test again. Watch the wrap up. All right. And as each request is being made, you'll notice now I can actually expand each of the sample results and get additional information on what else was being downloaded. Let's go back to the results tree here, and I've got five results here. So now I have a test of five users going to the Blaze Media website, waiting five seconds, and, select and then select pricing. So I want to do a little cleanup just because I don't like how I did this here. I'm going to introduce another element called here, so add config element called the HTTP request defaults. Now let me move this up and place this after the cookie manager. And under here, I'm going to use a site variable. So what this means is for every one of these requests made, it's going to go to whatever might define in the site, blazemeter.com. 
So if I go back to the first sampler, I can actually get rid of this. And in the path, I can just put the slash to say home. And in the pricing, I can remove this as well and just say slash pricing. I run my test again. Get the sample request up and running. And test still works. And we're in my results tree, same thing. Great. Now you have successfully created your first JMeter script. Next time, we'll take a look at how to use JMeter to record our actions on a web page. Until then, enjoy.